Erin uh, from John Sisk and Sun Limited. Erin is a regional BIM manager. His role focuses on scaling existing technologies and best practices alongside exploring new ways of working that enable better collaboration, higher productivity, and a shift towards more data-driven decision-making. In this presentation, Erin will talk about improving pro process uh, progress reporting using Speckle. And let's welcome Erin on stage. Hello, how are we doing? Hope everybody's well. I'm just going to get myself connected. Cool. Um, thanks for the nice introduction. I uh, really appreciate it. So um, this afternoon, um, thanks for joining me today. And you know, the what we create as an industry, it you know, it plays a pivotal role in society due to its direct impact in all of our lives. You know, whether it's creating new infrastructure, you know, to be better connected new homes for new memories or healthcare facilities to provide healing spaces. Um, with this in mind, you know, we must strive for a mindset of kind of fostering kind of continuous innovation and improvement. And today I'll be discussing a topic that is shaping the present and defining the future of construction. And that's the relationship between digital transformation and modern methods of construction. Um, I'll highlight the crucial role played by BIM data and automation in this uh, transformative journey and how we've been using Speckle in practice. So, um, my name's Aaron Atkinson, um, and I've recently just moved into a new role at CISC. Um, I was previously a, a regional BIM manager, but I've now moved into the BIM lead role. Um, and I've got a pretty exciting agenda today. I'm personally really passionate um, and I'm an advocate for the transformation that modern methods of construction is bringing to the industry and today I'll be taking you on a bit of a journey um, on revealing CISC and peeling back um, the layers of our vision and mission then exploring MMC and DFMA and the possible and the future of possibilities that lie beyond conventional practices and then finally a project spotlight demonstrating on how we've applied speckle uh, in the field so um CISC who are we what do we do where do we work uh, so we're an international engineering and construction company and year after year, we're finding ourselves, you know, getting recognized by the industry for excellence uh, in BIM and digital engineering. And um, we work across a range of sectors um, all um, over kind of mainland Europe um, and within the UK. And what we do, we offer a life cycle approach to construction across this kind of diverse range of sectors. Uh, we've got offices in Ireland and the UK um, headquarter wise. Um, but yeah, we've got projects all throughout Europe, uh, working across different types of sectors. So um, creating spaces for future generations with care, integrity and excellence is what we do. Uh, it's really what we all do. And, you know, innovation is at the heart of our business. Um, we are kind of, we, we do continuously invest and explore like new technologies, um, kind of, you know, foster and encourage a visionary mentality, which I'm sure, you know, transcends of a lot of people here today, both challenging ourselves, our supply chain, um, to be creative and innovate in everything we do, because it's important for us to keep on pushing the boundaries. And throughout history, um, I think, you know, we've frequently delivered on this approach and it's the use of new technologies, building techniques on countless projects that we all do and deliver to, to build a better world. So um, before we take a deep dive into the project spotlight and start to, you know, peel back the curtain on how we're using Speckle. Um, I want to take the opportunity to kind of take a step back and for everyone to manage a world where every piece of information seamlessly integrates, where precision is not just a goal, but it's something that's guaranteed and where efficiency is the norm rather than an expectation. And, you know, personally, I think this world is not a distant dream. I think it's a reality that we can achieve. So thinking about that, you know, what does the future of construction look like? Um, what kind of global pressures do we need to respond to now? Or even taking it back a step further and asking ourselves what kind of legacy do we want to leave behind? In a 
Today's dynamic landscape, uh, interconnected network, acts as a vital component, uh, seamlessly connecting people, products, services, and data, resulting in unparalleled efficiencies and collaboration. You know, this intricate web transcends traditional boundaries, uh, fosters a synergy that transforms isolated entities into a cohesive ecosystem where people, once distanced and separated, find themselves linked, facilitating the change of ideas and expertise. And I think today is an example of them, of all of us here at SpeckleCon. Products and services connected, seamlessly moving through a network in the buildings that we design and deliver and construct meeting the requirements of the audience with precision. And then there's just a pulse of data that flows at the heart of this connectivity. You know, it really kind of surges through the veins um, and it allows for kind of human creativity, concrete offerings and digital information that drives us towards an era where collaboration has no limits and as a kind of a collective potential that surpasses the sum of its parts. In order to achieve a sustainable future, um, it's imperative for us to envision a construction ecosystem that goes beyond the conventional. And such a system is not merely a collection of structures. You know, it is a living and breathing entity that you know harmonizes with the environment. Um, you know, it enhances the quality of the built world. And at its core, it is a sustainable construction ecosystem that embodies the commitment to minimize the environmental impacts, optimize efficiencies, um, so optimize resourcing, and um, fosters resilience. You know, where we have materials that were previously a limited resources now contribute towards a circular economy that continuous reuse and recycle of them or where new technologies like speckle harmlessly blend in with traditional craftsmanship you know producing buildings that are not only you know significantly structural or architectural excellence but also reveal a profound relevance to the environment essentially a sustainable construction environment not only builds structures but it cultivates a tradition of conscientious management and then finally um, improving the integration between construction and operations. It's essentially achieving optimal performance and the long vegetation of the assets we create, buildings, infrastructure. Um, I like to picture it as a smooth transaction where the construction process seamlessly merges with the efficiency of operations management. You know, this enhanced connectivity is not just a technological integration, but it's like a strategic alliance, which kind of like guarantees lessons learned during construction echo through to the assets operational lifestyle, um, life, like lifespan. Um, in this collaboration, you know, information, the experience acquired throughout design, construction, become a guided tool for the operational efficiency of the building or structure. Um, this exchange between you know, design teams, construction teams, um, and then even operation and management teams, you know, it's not just considered a handover, but it's a relay, it's a transfer of knowledge accurately. You know, this interconnectivity, I guess if we want to call it, um, is a culture of kind of like consistent kind of in enhancement um, where insights from the operational phase feedback into the construction methodology kind of creating this feedback loop where a building or an asset not only fulfills its operational requirements but there's a relationship where it exceeds expectation by adopting ever-evolving needs or the emergence of technology um, improving this connectivity between construction and operation it really acts as like a formative bridge um, and I'm going to go into detail into uh, and spotlight projects where we'll be demonstrating of how we're kind of working towards these principles to kind of shoot shape the future of construction. So um, the project spotlight, Wembley, NEO2 and NEO3. Um, for those that are in the UK, this project is located in northwest London. England um, in Wembley Park and our NEO2 and NEO3 projects is the first of a development that is being built on the northeast plot of Wembley Stadium located just up at the top of the screen there and we've got a bit of a history in Wembley we've been part of the regeneration for about 18 years now and we've completed I think, nine projects 
Um, all of them have been on time and been on budget. And what's been in the DNA of each of these projects is the kind of continuous transformation to deliver these projects with digital and to keep on improving on each and every single one, kind of going back to that lessons learned piece and kind of connecting that data that of we've handed over a project, we've seen what's worked and we've cycled back knowledge and improved it the second time around. But to provide some context on like, the scale of this project that we're working on at the moment, um, we're delivering two kind of high rise plots simultaneously at the moment. Um, so total 769 new homes. And the total scheme will be a footprint of just under 10,000 square meters, which includes like green spacing and landscaping as well. So the facade design on this project has transformed from a traditional brick slip design to a fully finished concrete facade. Um, our focus on weathering, uh, buildability and lessons learned has kind of led us to an economical situ um, solution where we've eliminated penetrations using hotel style risers, which is another aspect of our MMC approach on this project, um, and simplifying interfaces with weathering and water egress through a casting uh, bracket for a bolt on balcony to create like, um, you know, identity. We have um, enhanced the panel through various mold finishes and fenestration, um, pushing the boundaries with mold parameters and pigmentation, which has been kind of utilizing um, acid et etching and grit blasting processes. Um, we have achieved this through um, this kind of this final finish through like drip daily detailing, uh, weathering, interface with details, and it results in uh, appearance you know, which is refined, but also has considerations to cost and weight kind of preferences. So from a sustainability perspective, um, this approach has, you know, it's it's unlocked lots of opportunities where we've continuously looked at how we could reduce carbon on the project. Um, whether through the use of MMC, we've kind of demonstrated that, you know, there's a reduction in waste, fewer transportations to site. Uh, the reduction in transportation materials, um, sorry, the reduction in transportation emissions um, with the less traveling and all, all of it coming together being an optimized design, which is sustainable and reduces embodied carbon. Um, and I'll be touching back on how we've been using Speckle to feed data all around this sustainable design and this facade design and how we've been tracking the progress of it on our project. But before I get into the fun stuff, I have to acknowledge the challenge that we had. So um, throughout the pre-construction periods, we faced a challenge. And it was how could we effectively monitor the production of over I think it was like 1,700 precast panels, which had multiple trades input in it, data from different suppliers, and everything was happening all off site. And there wasn't, you know, you couldn't actually see it come into fruition um, every single day like you would do with something in situ. Um, so previously on our projects, our engineers, site managers, project managers would spend quite a lot of time establishing, collecting, reviewing and updating trackers that sat in silos. And it was a time consuming task and it um, resulted in quite a lot of Excel trackers. It would take days to do and it would mean that there would be a lot of traveling around going to the manufacturing location, um, getting word of mouth on progress to a level of degree. And something about it just didn't really sit right with us this time around, especially with processes in this day and age. And I guess you could say our digital transformation senses started tingling. And But we wanted to, you know, we wanted to continue this journey that we have already made and, kind of moving toward, moving away from a, um, I would like to call it a vertical reporting process, sorry, a horizontal reporting process, where you've got um, various pieces of information sitting in different locations that don't really talk to each other, moving towards a more vertical process where data feeds into a central hub. And, you know, this is where Speckle really kind of stepped in for us. So one of our first challenges was to look at automation and automation really came through to standardization. And there's two levels to this. 
we took our field data that we capture. So that's the relationship between quality and production. And we standardized our quality assurance process to align and trigger hold points throughout the production process. So I think if you look for, look at it, the way a drawing goes through approval on a common data environment, you start at one location and you finish with a final sign off. And it's the same way that, you know, a piece of a building elements get signed off, it gets reviewed and then it moves on to the next trade and et cetera. So obviously that's a process that we do. So we just aligned our whole point process to that. And every single time we went through a QA process on each ind individual panel that was scanned with its you know, unique QR code, it would give us a live update on where it is along the production process. The next stage was what can we do with the BIM data and then how could we tap into more in-depth reporting? And this is where we harnessed object based version control system for 3D data. And it allowed us to track the changes of these whole points within the 3D model. And then Speckle stepped in with their connectors, uh, especially their Power BI connector. We've been really been able to stress test this and make this work for us and um, get great value out, out of it. And it has allowed us to think outside of the box in the way that we report with our BIM data. Kind of going back to you know that future of construction that I was talking about and having that interconnectedness between our data and having that information really kind of flow through the veins is like principles that we you know we're really trying to kind of put into practice. So um, we established a relationship between our data sources, which obviously typically wouldn't kind of communicate it. And Speckle has really been the, the vehicle to facilitate this connection. Um, the dashboards, you know, that we've produced is a vertical, is a representation of um, a vertical reporting system, which monitors the advancement of offsite construction, delivery and installation. We've also, utilize other data that's been captured on the projects sort of stuff around life cycle assessment and carbon measurement and we've been tracking the a5 um, site emissions against the projected values and bringing carbon into the conversation with program production and quality is really like enabled and empowered people on the project at the cold face of our construction project to Im improve and talk about this stuff and bring it to the table and start to ask questions on how certain use of certain plants is affecting our carbon output and whether we could be more efficient while working with real-time data. The um, Speckle Power BI connector, um, you know, it's really kind of streamlined the uh, analysis of the data within the 3D model, really kind of converting it into an interactive Power BI dashboard, um, kind of linked to visuals. It's really granted access to, you know, the project team um, and, you know, those that have been using it to, you know, really in, in investigate various aspects of the facade. Um, and it's been a valuable tool for providing a comprehensive update on the facade progress and the overall data of the building. Um, I am delighted to kind of say that, you know, from the, the work that we've been doing, you know, we have we've awarded uh, an excellence in BIM and digital construction award by London Builds and received an accommodation by Offsite. Um, we've also among the shortlist nominees for the London Construction, uh, London Build and Construction National Building and Construction Awards. Um, you know, these are, you know, um, it's a great honor to be acknowledged for the work that we're doing, but to also represent, you know, the transformation shift in the industry um, and the commitment to digital transformation and really trying to push the boundaries in regards to performance collaboration, innovation, and data management. And, you know, these accomplishments are really the fruit of cooperation and collaboration between the digital delivery team and the project team with the support of Speckle. And, you know, we've yielded great benefits out of this from the configuration in comparison to traditional methodology is, you know, it's 72% faster. And, you know, the cycle of reporting is 
so much faster. The 98% is it's kind of ridiculous. We pinch ourselves when we think of the tools that we've implemented to get here. But it's just a demonstration of the journey that we've been on um, and where we are now and, you know, where we hope to get to in the, in the future. So, you know, being able to take a report in down from, you know, days to mere minutes is by just automating, you know, tedious, time consuming tasks and thinking about how we can connect our data differently. And we've also, you know, we've seen great benefits from um, kind of like cost savings through obviously the increase in productivity and efficiencies, um, the reduction in risk, uh, especially around like program certainty, and then even like detecting delays and issues on, um, and, you know, enhancing vis visibility and decision making, you know, the, the people that go out and you know, build these build these projects. Everybody's a specialist, and they understand. And you know, giving them giving them the tools and the real time insights really enables us to do a better job um, and improve collaboration as and um, communication, um, as well as uh, obviously supporting our you know aspirations with hitting net zero and carbon reduction, as well as like alignment with the digital transformation strategy. So since implementing this reporting method, there's been a significant interest in using it in other aspects of the project. Um, we've applied the process to the 3D riser modules that I mentioned earlier, which kind of linked to the lack of penetrations within the facade. And it's given us even more greater insight into ability and visibility of what's happening offsite on this project. Um, you know, the work has gained great approval throughout CISC and we've reached, recently been featured in the construction news, um, which is really kind of demonstrating the positive impact of innovation um, and, and kind of drive towards outside of the box thinking and new ways of working. At the moment, we are kind of currently implementing this tool at scale across the biz business. Um, and, you know, I'm personally and everybody else is, we're kind of eagerly anticipating discovering more of what Speckle can do to enhance our digital delivery. You know, I think our utilization of construction data analytics, it enables us to transform data into intelligence, uh, improve like, workflows, streamline information flow, and I guess our approach is pretty straightforward and I really like to keep things simple uh, because through simplicity, we find scalability and value creation, but really kind of considering like a user focused design. And I guess at the kind of center at this approach, it, it is driven through collaboration. It, you know, there's aspects of innovation, but it always kind of ties back to that user centric standardization. And, you know, Speckles really opened the doors for us to you know, use more of our information that we're generating on our projects. And, you know, we are a firm believer that, you know, the standardization that we put in place is crucial to a facilitating um, automation and, you know, establishing those kind of cons um, consistent set of requirements and utilizing a tool that Speckle has enabled us to do is unlocking modern processes that align with our modern methods of construction, a term I like to use. So what is next? And it's a, it's a question that's always prompted when you come up with a new process or a new idea because you're like where are we going part of the journey is quite exciting because although you have a destination in mind that outside of the box thinking gives you probably that level of uncomfortableness where you're not 100 percent sure where it's going to end up because you know we you find and discover things through um you know innovation which might not have been on the radar but you come to realize that it's adding great value and I'm really excited that we're in this position. I think it's really exciting. We've got this structured log of data throughout the creation of this building and or these 1,700 um, plus facade panels and the progress that's happened. But it's allowing us to look at how we understand productivity in a new way for our operations. It's allowed us to look at trends and kind of really get underneath the skin of our BIM data and who knows one day might communicate with an AI but most importantly it's we're learning lessons and we're finding improvements to drive value for all that are using it 
And I think it dovetails in quite nicely with what I was saying earlier around, you know, where is our industry going and what what do what's our role with it? And what Speckle is doing at the moment for us at CISC, it's 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 allowing us to unlock data to establish a more connected network, driving towards a sustainable construction ecosystem whilst improving connectivity. So um, yeah, that's that's it. That's where we are. Um, if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to feel free to reach out. Um, if not, feel free to scan the QR code and let's connect. Um, and looking forward to sharing more of our journey at using Speckle within our organization. Okay, could you say what construction contract was used on this project? So this is, is a design and build contract. So we started at stage four, um, we, which was well, a few years ago, probably. Um, and kind of through then we kind of got involved uh, with the client um, and the design team and our supply chain to you know, best deliver this project as well as we could. And I think, you know, just before I kind of move on to the next question, I think, you know, as, as I was kind of mentioning earlier that we've been working with this client for 18 years and we've gone on a journey with them and we've taken them on a journey, not just from a digital delivery perspective, but just from a quality of building. And it is, it is that relationship of kind of trust uh, and that kind of like, you know, we know you guys can deliver and we know you can improve on, you know, what was done previously that has probably really propelled and put us in the position that where we are now. So that's a nice long answer to a simple question. <laughs> Thanks. I'm not quite sure how you move on to the next one. I don't know if I control that or not. Oh, there we are. Um, how was Power BI connection performing for big projects? So yeah, so this 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 was this this was part of the journey, um, and full credits to Speckle for allowing us to stress test their connectors. Um, so I don't know the the Revit file uh, or files that we brought in were probably on the larger side of files just because of the sheer size of the project. You know the you know we adopt this model central uh, centric delivery, um, and we we try to do as much in the models as possible that's going to add value to the project um so you know there's not data waste or there's not you know there's not wasted information so um i'll say that we've 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 got people out on the field out on site with ipads and phones that are pulling up these models and user utilizing them in power bi and on you know the speckle streams and you know they're working fine and they're performing well and i think one of the great things is, is that performance at each upgrade is just keeps on improving um so yeah we haven't had much issues from a connection standpoint which is good could sis bring this digital innovation to pre-construction services um yeah i i think the I think the the important thing to kind of touch upon in 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 that question is that final point about having a connection between construction and the operations as part of the future of the industry. And I think as when I summarize construction, I guess you know pre-construction, the PCSA, the design, it all kind of feeds under that that kind of heading. And what it has opened up with, it's provided us kind of structured data for a aspect of a building which you know is is really our bread and butter um and it's provided us a next level of scrutiny um and insights into what we do so there is a you know 100 percent there's opportunity for us as our kind of next step is to really get underneath the skin of the data that we have you know opened up and access to with speckle at the moment and start to kind of feed it into our next cycle of our projects yet again going back to that kind of feedback loop um so jonathan i hope that answers the question okay okay how long was the setup time for the full stack uh what was the project size what project size doesn't make sense to implement it um so yeah so from a kind of a full length so configuration of it probably took about an hour 
um, once everything was kind of set up. But you know, I need to acknowledge that there was a there was there was a testing period prior to that, um, and you know, a back and forth with Speckle to 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 kind of like help us, you know, the community forum um, and how everybody engages on that is f fantastic, and it's been really really helpful. And in regards to project size, um, I don't think we should limit ourselves to the size or scope of a project you know whether there is an aspect of something happening offline uh, sorry off-site or even on-site i think we gather our data um and if we kind of take that approach of could we look to better connect our information could we create more standardization against our ecosystem of platforms that we could bring you know efficient kind of tracking whether it's on-site or off-site into this kind of process um so you know whether you're developing a, a master plan of five or six buildings or you know your 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 building your home um, um you know there's I, I i do think there's a use case for this but um as i said we're still going on that journey so i'm looking forward to sharing more insights as we scale this out across the business and scale it across our portfolio of projects Okay, from your point of view, uh, what would be the starting point for the design build contractor who wants to embark on a digital transformation? What could be a simple and easy win for them to get more involved and interested in? Well, that's a digital transformation. What a question. Um, do you know, it, it really ties back to um, what I mentioned earlier about the user focusedness. Um, so it's probably really engaging with those that are on the, you know, the cold face of the delivery and kind of finding out what their pain points are. And then as, as you know, you know, digital specialists or, whatever, you know, whatever term we want to give it is that's when we could kind of in, in seed and, 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 you know, start to plant the seeds of where there's going to be the most growth. Um, you know, there's 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 probably a lot of different aspects you could probably look into from a engagement with um the design teams and how you structure and, and manage that design data for your delivery but then also for journey that you take your clients on and what are their organizational um aspirations for all of their assets and then how you can be that you know that mediator between what they ask for to be created and what they ex what they aspire to and those kind of hopes and dreams and you know that could be a seed that starts a digital transformation within the business you know trying to match the dots between you know design output and client expectations um but if you know if you wanted any kind of simple kind of e e ease easy wins um i think it's just really demonstrating the value that digital transformation could bring to whatever aspect of you know a uh, business or a contractor is trying to tap into whether it's from a supply chain perspective um or design as i mentioned or the actual delivery of the construction project you know getting that information to people in an easy readable user-friendly format um that they can work with and provide feedback with and then the journey and evolution is a collective conversation instead of a singular one 